It was a cool October evening, just a week before Halloween, when Emily and her friends decided to venture into the infamous Maple Street. Known for its eerie atmosphere and unsettling history, Maple Street was home to several haunted houses and creepy stories that circulated through their small town. The most notorious tale was that of the old Whitaker House, which stood at the end of the street, cloaked in darkness and shadows. The Whitaker House had been abandoned for decades. Locals whispered of strange noises, flickering lights, and a ghostly figure that roamed the grounds at night. It was said that Elizabeth Whitaker, the last resident, had vanished without a trace one stormy night. Some believed her spirit lingered in the house, trapped between this world and the next. Emily, always the bravest of her friends, decided it would be fun to explore the house and document their findings for her YouTube channel, Haunted Encounters. Her friends, Mark, Lisa, and Tom, were initially hesitant but eventually agreed, wanting to prove their bravery as Halloween approached. As they walked down Maple Street, the air grew colder and the trees rustled ominously. The leaves crunched beneath their feet as they approached the Whitaker house. Its once grand facade was now crumbling, gray, with vines creeping up the walls like skeletal fingers. The windows were shattered and the front door hung slightly ajar, creaking with every gust of wind. Let's go in, Emily urged, excitement and fear flickering in her eyes. Mark, always the skeptic, rolled his eyes but followed her lead. They stepped inside, their flashlights illuminating the dusty, cobweb-laden interior. The scent of mold and decay filled their nostrils as they entered the living room, which was frozen in time. Old furniture was covered in white sheets, giving the room an ethereal, ghostly appearance. Let's split up, Emily suggested, her voice echoing in the stillness. We can cover more ground and meet back here in 15 minutes. Reluctantly, the group agreed. Mark and Lisa headed upstairs, while Tom and Emily explored the ground floor. As they moved through the shadowy corridors, Tom could feel an unsettling chill creeping up his spine. This place gives me the creeps, he whispered, trying to lighten the mood. Emily laughed nervously, but deep down, she felt the weight of the house's history pressing down on them. As they made their way into the kitchen, Tom noticed a door leading to the basement. What do you think is down there? he asked, peering into the darkness. Emily shrugged, her heart racing with a mix of fear and curiosity. Only one way to find out. They descended the creaky wooden steps, the air growing colder with each step. At the bottom, they found a small room filled with old furniture, broken mirrors, and what appeared to be Elizabeth Whitaker's belongings. Dust swirled in the faint light from their flashlights, creating an almost ethereal glow around them. Suddenly, they heard a loud thud coming from upstairs, followed by what sounded like a woman's laughter. Startled, they exchanged fearful glances. Did you hear that? Tom asked, his voice trembling. Emily nodded, her excitement quickly turning to dread. Let's check on Mark and Lisa, Emily suggested, her voice barely above a whisper. They hurried back up the stairs, their hearts pounding in unison. When they reached the second floor, they found Mark and Lisa standing outside a room at the end of the hallway, looking pale and shaken. What happened? Emily asked, breathless. Something just moved inside, Lisa stammered, her eyes wide with fear. I swear I saw a figure standing in the corner. Probably just a shadow, Mark said, trying to sound brave, despite the tremor in his voice. Let's just take a look. With cautious steps, they approached the door. As they pushed it open, the room revealed itself as a child's bedroom, adorned with old toys and faded wallpaper. A rocking horse stood in the corner, eerily still. Suddenly, the door slammed shut behind them, and they jumped hearts racing. Okay, this is getting weird, Mark said, trying to suppress his growing anxiety. Let's just get out of here. But as they turned to leave, they heard a soft voice whispering, help me. The sound sent chills down their spines and they froze in place. Did you hear that? Tom asked, his voice barely above a whisper. Emily nodded, her eyes wide with terror. We need to go now, Emily urged, and they all hurried to the door, but it wouldn't budge. Panic set in as they pushed and pulled, but it remained locked tight. The whispers grew louder, echoing in their ears. Help me, please. Just when they thought they would be trapped forever, the door swung open and they stumbled into the hallway, gasping for breath. They rushed down the stairs, feeling an invisible force pressing against them as if urging them to leave. As they reached the front door, it slammed shut and the laughter echoed once again, now sounding more sinister. 
You can't leave. It mocked. Run, Emily shouted, and they bolted for the door, desperate to escape. As they fumbled with the handle, they felt a cold hand grip Emily's wrist. She screamed, and the others turned to see a translucent figure of a woman with hollow eyes and a sorrowful expression. Help me, she pleaded, but her voice was filled with anguish. In a panic, Mark pulled Emily free, and they burst through the door, tumbling onto the front lawn. They didn't stop running until they reached the safety of Maple Street. Breathless and terrified, they turned to look back at the Whitaker house. The windows glowed faintly, and the figure stood in the doorway, watching them, her eyes filled with despair. From that day on, they vowed never to return to Maple Street. The experience haunted them long after Halloween had passed. On quiet nights, they could still hear the whispers of Elizabeth Whitaker echoing in their minds, begging for help. Every Halloween, they remember that night and the lesson learned. Some spirits are not at peace and might be forever trapped, seeking solace in a world that has long, long forgotten them. Story number two. As Halloween approached in our small, quiet town, the excitement in the air was palpable. Children could be seen trick-or-treating through the neighborhood, their laughter echoing against the backdrop of fallen leaves and the crisp autumn breeze. However, our street had an air of unease, centered around one particular house, the decrepit old place next door. For years, it had stood abandoned, shrouded in rumors and eerie tales. The house, once vibrant and full of life, had succumbed to neglect. Its paint was peeling, windows boarded up, and the overgrown garden was a wild tangle of weeds. The locals whispered about the old man who had lived there, a reclusive figure named Mr. Hafford, who mysteriously vanished years ago. Some claimed he had died in the house, while others said he had simply disappeared into thin air. Despite the unsettling stories, my friends and I felt an irresistible pull to explore the abandoned property. As Halloween night neared, we devised a plan. Armed with flashlights and a sense of adventure, we decided to venture into Mr. Hafford's house on the night of October 31st. The moon hung high in the sky, casting a ghostly glow over the street as we approached the old house. The air was thick with anticipation and a hint of fear. We pushed open the creaky front gate which groaned as if warning us to turn back. Ignoring the foreboding creak, we stepped onto the porch, where the door stood ajar, inviting yet menacing. The interior was cloaked in darkness, with dust particles dancing in the beams of our flashlights. The air was stale, carrying the scent of mold and decay. We entered slowly, hearts racing, every creak of the floorboards sending shivers down our spines. Shadows flickered along the walls, forming shapes that seemed to move just beyond the edges of our vision. Is anyone here? I called out, trying to inject some courage into our group. My voice echoed ominously, swallowed by the silence of the house. We moved deeper into the home, finding remnants of Mr. Hafford's life scattered throughout. Old photographs lined the walls, their faces obscured by dust and time. As we examined the faded images, an uneasy feeling settled over me. There was something unsettling about the way the eyes in those photographs seemed to follow us. Suddenly, we heard a soft thud from upstairs. We exchanged nervous glances and fear wrapped around us like a shroud. It's probably just the wind, one of my friends whispered, but even he sounded unconvinced. Driven by a mix of fear and curiosity, we ascended the creaky staircase, each step echoing loudly in the stillness. The second floor was darker, the air heavier. We discovered a hallway lined with doors, all closed, each one hiding untold secrets. One door at the end of the hall caught our attention. It was slightly ajar, a faint light spilling out from the crack. Should we go in? Someone asked, their voice trembling. Let's check it out, I replied, trying to sound braver than I felt. Pushing the door open, we found ourselves in a small, dimly lit room. The air was colder here, and we shivered involuntarily. In the center of the room stood a dusty old mirror, its surface tarnished and cracked. It seemed to pulsate with a strange energy, drawing us closer. As we approached the mirror, I felt a chill run down my spine. I caught a glimpse of something behind us, a fleeting shadow that vanished as quickly as it appeared. Did you see that? I gasped, spinning around. What? My friend replied, confused. Nothing, I said, shaking it off. It must have been my imagination. We turned back to the mirror and my breath caught in my throat. The reflection was distorted, showing not just our images, but also a shadowy figure standing behind us. 
Panic surged through me and I glanced back. Nothing was there. Guys, we should go, I urged, but my words fell on deaf ears. The group was entranced by the mirror, their eyes glazed as if in a trance. Look, one of my friends exclaimed, pointing. In the reflection, the shadowy figure seemed to come closer, its features beginning to solidify. It was the old man, Mr. Hafford, with hollow eyes and a twisted grin. Run, I shouted, grabbing my friends and pulling them away from the mirror. We bolted down the hallway, fear propelling us forward. As we descended the stairs, the house seemed to come alive. Doors slammed shut behind us, and we could hear footsteps echoing in the darkness, following us. Hurry, I urged, panic rising in my chest. We burst out of the front door and onto the porch, our hearts pounding like drums. The moonlight bathed us in a pale glow as we raced toward the street, not daring to look back. We could hear a low, raspy laughter echoing from the house, chilling us to the bone. Once we reached the safety of the streetlights, we finally stopped, breathless and shaken. What the hell was that? One of my friends gasped. I don't know, but we need to get out of here, I replied, glancing back at the ominous silhouette of the house. It loomed over us, a dark reminder of the terror we had just escaped. From that night on, we avoided the old house and its haunting history. Halloween passed, but the memory of Mr. Hafford and his shadowy presence lingered, a ghostly reminder of the horrors that could lie just next door. Years later, I still can't shake the feeling that the old man is still watching, lurking in the shadows, waiting for someone else to step into his world. One where the line between the living and the dead is thin and easily crossed. So as you prepare for Halloween, remember, some houses hold secrets and some spirits never truly leave. Beware the shadows and listen for the whispers. You never know what might be waiting just beyond your door. Story number three. In a quaint little town, there stood an ancient elm tree at the center of a small park, which had long been rumored to be cursed. The townsfolk spoke in hushed tones about the sinister history of the tree, claiming that anyone who dared to carve their initials into its bark would suffer a terrible fate. As Halloween approached, these stories became even more pronounced and the fear surrounding the tree grew. 17-year-old Alex, a thrill seeker and a firm believer in urban legends, scoffed at the tales. To him, they were just that, stories meant to frighten children. His friends, Jenna, Mark, and Lucy, felt differently. They were wary of the tree, but Alex was determined to put the legend to the test. One chilly evening, just a few days before Halloween, Alex convinced his friends to join him for a nighttime adventure at the park. Let's carve our initials into the old elm and see if anything happens, he declared, a mischievous glint in his eyes. Though hesitant, Jenna, Mark, and Lucy finally agreed, wanting to support their friend and hoping to dispel the myths once and for all. As they approached the tree, the moon hung high in the sky, casting an eerie glow across the park. The old elm loomed before them, its gnarled branches stretching out like twisted fingers. The bark was rough and dark, covered in moss and age. A shiver ran down Jenna's spine as she stared at the tree, an unsettling feeling creeping over her. Let's just get this over with, Mark muttered, trying to mask his fear. They each took turns carving their initials into the tree with a small pocket knife Alex had brought along. As Alex carved his initials, he laughed, boasting, This is just a stupid story. Nothing's going to happen. Once they had all etched their initials into the bark, they stood back to admire their handiwork. There, it's done, Alex said, a triumphant grin on his face. Let's head to the diner. I'm starving. Just as they turned to leave, a sudden gust of wind swept through the park, rattling the branches of the elm. Lucy gasped as she felt a cold breeze brush past her, and she glanced back at the tree, now casting an ominous shadow under the moonlight. Did you guys feel that? She asked, her voice trembling. It's just the wind, Alex replied dismissively. Let's go! As they walked away, the laughter and chatter faded into the distance, but Jenna couldn't shake the feeling that something was off. The chill in the air lingered, and the moon seemed to grow dimmer, as if the night itself was warning them. The next morning, Alex awoke to a series of strange occurrences. He felt disoriented, his head heavy as if he hadn't slept at all. As he got out of bed, he noticed a dark stain on his pillow, something resembling blood. Confused, he brushed it off as a nightmare. Meanwhile, Jenna, Mark, and Lucy experienced their own unsettling events. Jenna found her favorite necklace missing, something she'd worn every day. 
Mark's car wouldn't start, and Lucy discovered that her pet cat had gone missing. The four friends met later that day to share their bizarre experiences, each one more alarming than the last. This is too weird, Lucy said, her voice shaking. What if the tree is really cursed? Alex rolled his eyes, still skeptical but sensing the tension. Come on, it's just a coincidence. We all just need to chill out. It's Halloween. It's supposed to be spooky. As the days passed, the strange occurrences continued. Jenna had vivid nightmares, plagued by images of the elm tree, while Mark's bad luck escalated. He slipped on ice and fell, twisting his ankle. Lucy received a chilling phone call in the middle of the night from an unknown number, a voice whispering her name. The atmosphere of dread grew heavier, and the town buzzed with Halloween excitement, while the friends grew increasingly worried. On Halloween night, with their costumes ready, the friends gathered at Jenna's house for a small get-together. They tried to enjoy the festivities, but, but the dark cloud of unease hung over them like a shadow. Finally, Alex suggested they confront the tree one last time. We can't let it beat us, he said, trying to mask his own fear. Let's go back and see if we can undo whatever curse we've unleashed. Reluctantly, the others agreed, each feeling the weight of the decision. As they approached the old elm, the air grew thick with tension, and the moon seemed to flicker, casting eerie shadows on the ground. They gathered around the tree, illuminated by their flashlights. What do we do now? Jenna whispered, glancing nervously at her friends. Alex took a deep breath. We need to apologize, he said, stepping forward. Maybe we can break the curse by acknowledging the legend. As he spoke, a gust of wind howled through the branches, rattling the leaves. Mark and Lucy exchanged frightened glances, and Jenna felt a shiver run down her spine. I'm sorry for carving our names into your bark, Alex said, his voice steady, but laced with fear. We didn't mean to disrespect you or your history. As soon as he finished, the wind stopped, and a deafening silence enveloped the park. The atmosphere shifted, and the feeling of being watched intensified. They waited, their hearts pounding in their chests, hoping for some sign of forgiveness. Suddenly, a dark figure emerged from the shadows, taking form before them. It was a woman dressed in tattered clothes, her eyes hollow and filled with sorrow. The friends gasped, fear rooting them to the spot. Why did you disturb my rest? The figure asked, her voice echoing in the night. I was bound to this tree for a reason. Jenna stepped forward, her voice shaking. We're sorry. We didn't mean to disturb you or your story. We just wanted to prove it wasn't real. The spirit regarded them with a mixture of anger and sadness. You've awakened something that should have remained undisturbed. Your actions have consequences. As the wind howled once more, the friends felt an overwhelming sensation of dread wash over them. What do we do? Mark cried, panic rising in his voice. Only by acknowledging the pain you've caused can you break the curse, the spirit said, her form flickering like a candle in the wind. You must remember and honor those who came before you, or you will suffer the consequences. With that, the spirit faded into the night, leaving the friends trembling in the silence. They stood there, processing what had just happened. It was then that they realized the truth. The curse wasn't just about the tree, but about the respect they had failed to show for the past. From that night on, they vowed to share the story of the cursed elm, warning others to honor the history of their town and its legends. As Halloween approached each year, they gathered beneath the tree, lighting candles and sharing stories, ensuring that the memory of the spirit would never be forgotten. And while the strange occurrences faded, they knew they had a responsibility to keep the legend alive, not as a tale to scare others, but as a reminder of the respect that history deserves. Story number four. In the quaint town of Maple Grove, nestled between rolling hills and dense forests, the arrival of Halloween brought a sense of excitement and dread. The townsfolk decorated their homes with cobweb skeletons and carved pumpkins, but one house remained untouched. It was an old Victorian mansion, rumored to be haunted by the spirit of its last resident, Mrs. Eliza Hargrove. Mrs. Hargrove had lived alone in the mansion for decades, until her mysterious death one stormy night. The townspeople whispered that she had dabbled in the occult, and it was said her spirit never left the house, trapped by the dark rituals she had performed. Children dared each other to knock on her door, but no one had the courage to enter. That is, until a group of teenagers decided to explore the mansion on Halloween night. 
It was a chilly evening, and the sky was painted with hues of orange and purple as the sun dipped below the horizon. Armed with flashlights and a sense of bravado, Sarah, Jake, Emily, and Mark approached the creaking wrought iron gate of the mansion. The air was thick with an unsettling tension, but their curiosity outweighed their fear. As they pushed the gate open, it groaned ominously, as if warning them to turn back. They stepped onto the property, the grass crunching beneath their feet. The mansion loomed before them, its windows dark and foreboding, the roof sagging like an old man's back. Let's get this over with, Sarah said, trying to keep the mood light. They climbed the crooked steps to the front porch, where the door stood ajar, beckoning them inside. Taking a deep breath, they entered the dimly lit foyer, the air stale with the scent of mold and dust. The grand staircase spiraled upward, and the walls were lined with faded portraits of stern-looking ancestors, their eyes seeming to follow the intruders. Let's check out the living room first, Jake suggested, his voice echoing in the eerie silence. They cautiously made their way through the dark, musty rooms, their flashlights cutting through the gloom. Dust motes swirled in the beams, creating an otherworldly atmosphere. As they explored, they found remnants of Mrs. Hargrove's life. Old books filled with strange symbols, dusty furniture draped in white sheets, and a grand piano that seemed untouched by time. Emily, feeling adventurous, sat down and struck a few keys, producing a haunting melody that echoed through the house. Suddenly, the temperature dropped and a gust of wind swept through the room, extinguishing their flashlights. The darkness enveloped them, and they exchanged panicked glances. What was that? Mark whispered, his voice barely audible. Just the wind, Jake replied, but his tone betrayed his unease. They fumbled to turn their flashlights back on, and when the beams flickered to life, they were met with an unexpected sight, a shadowy figure standing in the doorway, its features obscured by the darkness. What the hell is that? Sarah gasped, stepping back. The figure seemed to glide closer, its movements unnatural and jerky. A chilling voice echoed in the air. You shouldn't have come here. The group turned and bolted, racing back through the house, hearts pounding in their chests. As they reached the front door, it slammed shut, trapping them inside. Panic surged through them as they desperately tried to open it, but it wouldn't budge. Look, Emily pointed toward the staircase. The shadow was now at the bottom, its form becoming more defined, a woman in a long flowing dress, her face pale and eyes hollow. Mrs. Hargrove's spirit was real. They could feel her anger radiating through the air, thickening the atmosphere with dread. Leave my home she shrieked, her voice echoing like a wailing wind. They turned and sprinted towards the back of the house, adrenaline fueling their flight. As they stumbled into the kitchen, they were met with an array of broken dishes and faded wallpaper, a stark contrast to the elegant rooms they had just passed through. Out the back, Jake shouted, and they bolted for the door. But as they reached it, it too slammed shut, the force knocking them back. The ghostly figure approached, her face twisting into an expression of sorrow and rage. In a moment of desperation, Sarah remembered the strange books they had seen earlier. There might be something in those books, she shouted. Are you crazy? We don't have time for that, Mark yelled, but the spirit was closing in on them and they had no choice. They dashed back into the living room where the books were scattered across the floor. With shaking hands, they rifled through the pages, searching for anything that could help. Suddenly, Emily gasped. Here, it talks about a protection spell. They quickly gathered around her, chanting the were words printed on the yellowed page. As they spoke, the temperature dropped further, and the lights flickered ominously. The spirit paused, her form flickering as if caught between worlds. Leave me be, she wailed, her voice a mix of rage and despair. The room shook, and objects began to fly off the shelves, crashing to the ground around them. With one final shout of the spell, a bright light enveloped them, pushing back the spirit, Mrs. Hargrove shrieked, and the force of her rage sent them tumbling back against the wall. Just as quickly as it began, the chaos ceased. The room fell silent, and the air grew still. They opened their eyes to find the mansion quiet, the oppressive atmosphere lifted. The front door creaked open on its own, a soft breeze inviting them outside. Without looking back, they ran through the doorway and out into the cool night air. As they reached the gate, they glanced back at the mansion. In the window, they could see the faint outline of Mrs. Hargrove, her expression one of sorrow, her figure slowly fading into the shadows. 
Breathless and shaken, they swore never to speak of that night again. As Halloween faded into memory, they carried the weight of their encounter, forever haunted by the spirit of Mrs. Hargrove and the shadows of Maple Grove.